or, or Pro Wrestling Ohio before that. Uh, I, I was very proud to be a part of it because it gave me my first big opportunity to spread my wings on the creative end and be more involved in, in storytelling. Um, because watching independent wrestling, uh, and uh, uh, you know, maybe this may not be the best thing to say on the inaugural inaugural <laughs> indie wrestling podcast, but a lot of indie wrestling sucks. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, yes. But I think and, no, I think it's important to have that discussion and have that you know comparison that you know a lot of, a, you know there's a good majority out there that isn't always that great. Mm-hmm. And being an indie wrestling announcer, inevitably I will wind up on some of those shows that suck, mm-hmm. and and <laughs> uh, not necessarily suck as a blanket statement, but maybe you have great talent and no direction. Maybe you have great direction and no budget for talent may you know there, there's different factors that go into that so if i have a show that i'm broadcasting and the talent is subpar or the promoter is, is, is green as grass as the expression goes and they re- they really don't get on some level that this match needs to tell a story that there need to be characters accomplishing a goal here i have to make stuff up not mm-hmm. not maliciously, but I have to logically fill in the blanks as I, I feel should be filled in as to what is trying to be attained. Um, that's how I fell in love with booking wrestling. You know, I figured out how to fill in the pieces as I went, so why not paint the whole picture? Um, and, and, and I had a chance to do a little bit of that in England with 1PW back in the, the, the mid-2000s. Um, but, but PWO was really my first chance to do that with a very young, uh, crop of talent. Um, you know, 20 year old Johnny Gargano, a 20 year old Gregory Iron, um, you know, uh, Matt Justice, um, you know, guys that have grown on, uh, uh, to, to, to do really good things, uh, just in their infancy. Um, and, and in time that job became too big. Um, you know, you talked about the biggest thing that became too big because I'm one person. I live in Pittsburgh, uh, uh, and I'm doing TV out of Cleveland. And when circumstances present themselves where I don't have that support system, I don't have that help on the promoting end, on the advertising end, on a TV production end, whatever the case was. When one part of the machine starts to falter, um, I, there's, there's a chain reaction. Um, and and it, there came to be a point where I was calling venues and booking dates. I was talking to sponsors to try to get money. I was negotiating with charities. I had to go out and buy and file insurance. I, I was doing um, the lion's share of promoting in addition to booking the shows and anybody who knows me has worked with me. I'm very meticulous with booking shows. Every match, every segment has to make sense, has to have purpose. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of detail into it. Mm -hmm. So to do that, which by itself is pretty overwhelming, um, uh, on top of being a promoter, which I never wanted to do, I told myself, I made a promise from day one, I would never be a promoter, and I would never put my own money into wrestling. And I broke both those promises to myself. Uh, but because I did it with good reason, because I believed in the product. Um, and I believed in our platform of, of Sports Time Ohio, you know, regional cable TV sports network. Um, and I believed in our guys. Um Unfortunately, the weight kept mounting on my shoulders. Um, the financial situation became a burden to me. And uh, uh, in July of 2013, uh, Fox Sports Network, which had bought the, the, the station six months earlier, got their new people and policies in place. And they wanted to hit us with a bill for insurance that would more than double our annual budget for producing TV. Um, you know, I, I, I knew then there needed to be a change. And, and unfortunately, there was nobody to pick up the slack. 
um, from a promotions end, from a financial end. You know, I, there were points I was having panic attacks because I had so much stress on me. Um, and, and I was doing three or four different people's jobs. Um, you know, and, and I'm not trying to put the heat on anybody else. We were always understaffed. But as health issues, money issues, uh, personal issues, professional issues, whatever set in, uh, it always seemed like there was something pulling somebody away. And I was the only one to step in. Um, mm-hmm. And it became it became a... Uh, 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 you know, a uh, negative to my health, my mental health, my physical health. I put on 20 pounds of stress weight. Um, uh, I, I knew something had to change. Um, and when the insurance thing came, I knew, you know, for better or worse, this was the change. Mm-hmm. This hurdle, I can't jump. If somebody can come along and, and jump that hurdle with me, I'm there. But I, I can't deplete my bank account and deplete my sanity just for an extra six months of shows or 12 months of shows. So mm-hmm. some hard decisions had to be made. And, and, and that's when Resolution 6 became, in all likelihood, the final show. And, and I will say um, we had a hell of a last chapter. And I'm very proud of it. And and. From day one, one of my worries was I'm going to put a lot, I'm going to put my life into this. And something's going to happen where I, I walk out bitter or angry. But thankfully, I was able to, to be completely proud of that show and the guys that were there from the Garganos and the Irons and the M Dogs that had been there from day one to the Rhinos and the Zach Gallons and the Paul Londons and, and everywhere in between. I was able to look at that show. And, and and walk out with my head held high, knowing that we ended it with dignity and class, uh, uh, as much dignity and class as you'll find in pro wrestling. Uh, we made it happen, and, and, you know, we left those people with a smile. Maybe a bittersweet smile, but a smile nonetheless. Hmm. Definitely. It's definitely going to be missed. Uh...